Okay, our next speaker is um, Senor Miguel Angel Martinez from Argentina, a member of the FCI General Committee since 1995, and over the years having been in charge of many of the hunting commissions. In 2015, he was awarded Outstanding Personality of Science by the City of Buenos Aires. President, president of the Dogo Argentina Association. He has also been president of the FCA during various periods and president of the FCI Americas and Caribbean section for 20 years. An all breeds judge and of the FCI and the FCA. He's also a working judge for the Vishla, English Springer Spaniel and the German Short Hat Pointer. Thank you very much. I want to talk about the, not from the university, but I come from Buenos Aires. I, I was designated by the legislative body of Buenos Aires as an illustrious citizen in science. Thanks very much to all of you. I'm sorry I'm losing my voice. But when I was told I would have this discussion about stress in hunting dogs, I said, well, it sounds like an easy thing. I mean, it's not too tough for me after 50 or 60 years as a hunter myself. But I want to thank first the FCI, its chairman, and all the general committee, the general committee of the Mexican Cenophile Federation, Dr. Pairo, the chairman, and to every one of you for being here today. The more people come with us, the more people get connected with all the topics we are discussing, the better dogs we have, the better connections we will have, because what really matters in this exchange is that what matters is the exchange over these days. Julia said a very important thing. She said that oftentimes the, we know that there are pedigree dogs, but people don't know that there is a federation or a kennel behind it. So, uh, only a week ago, we signed the putting, putting together a press commission to assess the results in order for FSA, FCI, FCI and all the cenophile to be well positioned in all the media in Argentina. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank the French so society, the Cyanophile Society, because the French club has honored me to pass a video to me, and you're going to watch this. For me, this is a work of art, and it was made by the Cinematography Institute of Paris. I shortened it because it is way too long. But here you can see when a hunting dog is not under stress. Hunting dogs are those which maintain their sweet technical capacities. But what is this what does this mean? This is and, and even more important, what can you gain access as a, as a breather? Breathing, maintaining the so technical conditions under which the breath they are breathing, the need to be maintained. And even more important, as a breather, to maintain the so technical conditions for which the breath itself was created. There are lots of hunting dogs. We have short hair, long hair, mid-sized mid hair, and all of them perform a basic duty, which is helping men in having the so technical conditions and for men to make use of that capacity of our dogs to help us in hunting. When mankind appeared on the surface of Earth in the Quaternary or Anthropozoic era, Erectus Petecanthropus, which was the first to walk on two legs, 
they were basically nomadic peoples. So they would walk through the plains hunting in order to get fed. Since they did not settle, there were no fruits or vegetables or many other types of food. They would only eat meat. And in order to do that, they had to hunt. There was no other way to feed their tribes. So then wolves, dogs would follow those tribes because they knew they would be around some, some places for some time and they would leave the place and they would leave lots of food waste behind. So dogs, wolves or the middle point between them would come and eat all the waste left behind by tribes when they move to another side. Because hunting animals, uh, because animals, uh, the prey had been gone, were gone. So these animals thought like, I don't need to hunt, I don't need to take any risk. So what can I do? They would walk behind those tribes, they would hunt, dogs and wolves would eat without having to hunt. And this is something we cannot tell when it exactly occurred. When exactly did men and, and dogs became friends and then the dogs started helping uh, humans hunt in order to, to eat better. That is a part of history. That's absolutely actual. This is a part of human history. Here we can see there are different ways of expression of a dog. Dog express, express themselves through movements, through moves, and they express and determine when they remain without movement and when they will jump and will take the prey. For hunting dogs, they have this a bit this skill, and they can show it, and they will not go on top of the uh, of a prayer without getting ready for this. That's something you cannot teach. That's a genetic incorporation. This is hardwired in genetics of hunting dogs. A hunting dog has the capacity to retain this in their mind to retain them and use these skills and features at the moment they need it for the purpose they need it. As we say, they do not have stress, but that's true because if a dog is always out on the field and they they are having, they are spending a good time in the place of origin, which is the open, open spaces, on the grass, in the free air. You can see hunting dogs, you see them often walking, they come to a corpse and they would lie on it. And once one of my dogs did it, they are hiding in the environment because it is not a different, an anthropic, an anthropic environment. And what is anthropism? It is when humans change the surrounding situation and environment for human activity, but not for the benefit of dogs. That is anthropism. And we see that animals are doing it in order to camouflage themselves and not to be identified, not to be perceived by the prayers that they're doing the hunting work. Here we can see that hunting animals have a connection with their owner. And this is something 
that cannot be removed automatically when they go out on the uh, out of the field it's like i help you you help me and that is why some of the key some of the key field tests there is a point saying collaboration between handler and dog and dog and handler because if you don't see collaboration between both there will be no success at all and there you can see that Field tests have grown in the world. Do you know how many certificates of international work attitude, how many of them are delivered between 1,500 and 2,000 certificates of international work attitude? But what is that? That means that people are participating more in field tests that are done without shooting in order to see if animals respond not to be afraid of the activities they are conducting without actually hunting the prey. There are great exhibitions in France, which is one of the countries of origin of hunting with the way using dogs. We have the Andalusia test of 15 days of test for all the people in the continent and England. The NFSC has two commissions, one the continental dogs and the English dogs, and plus the hunted retriever which does a great job, and some other hunting commissions like Amberin. And here we can see that animals work closer and closer with, and with humans. They, they responded better to the outside stimulus brought by men in order to survive and then to bring food to their homes. I can remember when I used, when I hunted, we would never buy meat. For many, many years, we would eat only what I hunted. Usually birds, not, not mammals or other types of animals, basically birds. This is a, a case of a mid-sized mid hare, and this is a good sample. This is the Breton, Spanish, Spanish Breton. This is an extraordinary animal, tireless animal, an excellent companion, both on the field and at home. And we continue watching this, and you can say, why can an animal be stressed? And stress is not a responsibility of the dog. It is, all, it is our fault. But why? It's quite simple. We go out on the field and we go directly hunting. And there is a rabbit or something, a bird. You should. And this poor animal, if they are not used to the shootings, that dog perhaps has... Uh, uh, a, fire, a firearm has been shot near their ears, and it's, like, it's a terrible injury. It is pretty sure that if this animal reacted to the shooting, that stress produced ruined them for all their lives. So you are only one miss, miss, missed shot without considering their temperament to ruin their hunting life or to fix it, it's going to take ages because it is very, it is very difficult to remove the reminiscence of a shot. Now, if you go out on the, to the field and all of your dog goes with you, you've been walking the dog since it was a puppy, when the puppy is, 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 is grown, they have to get used to something. They are asked to retrieve. And then you have what you call the bring brock, which is a decoy. You drop it, and the animal will go get it and retrieve it. So if you get them used to get this decoy and then you give them, I don't know, a cookie or some piece of balanced food, you pet them and you pray them, 
the dog is going to say is going to think this thing i brought is good for me because i get a good a good delicious thing i get congratulated upon it so that's something you can do and then you can get dogs to bring i don't know even an ice cube then when you're back in the field if you get, for example, somebody a hundred yards from there, then you throw the, the decoy and the other one shoots, but it's far in the distance, it would not affect their ears, and they bring the decoy back. They will connect again, they, they did it. I mean, I got something nice, I don't care about the shot, but then the shot, it's closer and closer to the handler, to the very point that you shoot and a bird a few meters away, the dog saw it, they will go retrieve it, and he knows it's going to be rewarded. Then there is a moment they don't even need to have any, any reward other than the love and joy of the, of the handler. Because they know that everything they bring is something we want to get. There you see, that very shot, is a hundred percent stress only if you don't take these measures I, I have just mentioned. This is an Argentine Mastiff. This is not a, do, uh, a show dog, basically, but in Argentina, the Uruguay uh, Uruguay Simon is used by the gauchos. We know that boars are exotic in South America. Boars came from Europe, but they don't have any natural predators. Those are some of the big mistakes we humans make. We bring animals without a natural enemy, and then they become a pest. So that will, that will affect the life, the life of the ecosystem, uh, including the farmer, the field owner, because you cannot hold, you cannot control it. A couple of weeks ago, the president of the Federation of, uh, of the Hunt Hunting Federation of Mexico died. He was a, a young man. We had to bring him back to Mexico through a family and all the rest of it. Well, he died as he wanted to. He didn't have to die. Had he had a support dog, nothing would have happened. Surely the dog would have been in the, in, in the middle. Gauchos, the gauchos in Argentina, firearms are expensive. So how can they protect their farms, their cattle, hens, and domestic production animals? Even, even pigs, because when boars, when one of the, when one of the female pigs are in heat, in heat, in heat, then the boars will come and take them. They will make the crossing, and at the beginning, they look like a boar, and then they develop as a, as a swine. But this dog will help people in the countryside protect their family and their farm as a whole. Here we have these other dogs that help hunt and maintain and limit the populations of pests like rabbits. See the focus in, in, in his eyes. This dog is not stressed at all. It's exactly the opposite. One other cause which we need to take into consideration to have a stress-free dog when you are out on the field is discipline. We are to teach them basic discipline. First, for, for us to know how to give directions to the dog. When we are hunting, we are happy, we're joyful, we're gonna, be, we're gonna bring something from the field. We're going there without do our dogs, but if they don't have the basic discipline, they start biting on the dog's hands, etc. And so what 
would people do, basically? They would punish the dog. They would punish the dog. And what are you causing? Stress, obviously. My owner is challenging, is challenging me and sometimes they are hit. So, do you see that this discipline is important? Only with shouting, like here, sit down, the dog will sit and stay there and will not commit any type of and of, of things that lead to being to being told off, punished and be stressed. Other things. Another important thing for dogs is nutrition. Dogs need to have an excellent nutrition. Hunting dogs. This is what I'm going to do. In this 20 steps, I walked in the field. The dog walked 70 meters to that in that direction and 70 in the other direction. And in this zigzag, he is looking, he is looking for and marking the bird or whatever they find. This means that if you walk three kilometers, the dog will walk between seven and 10 kilometers. So just imagine if the dog is not well fed, impossible. If the dog is too thin, they would not be able to do it because they lack vitality. And if they are overweight, they cannot do it. They will get tired. They will not cover this duty. That is why it's so important to have the assistance of a vet doctor to maintain the dog totally well fed, well dosed, and with all the vaccinations needed. And another important thing, anti-parasite medication before you go out on the field and after the hunting season has finished. When you have a dog that does all this work, it has to have a special nutrition, particularly over hunting season. They need to get the best food, but in a limited amount, not more than it, but it has to be an energy rich food so that they are well fed and they can perform their duties. Their duties. There are different factors over the resp stress responses. Age, inherit inheritance, just action, lactation, and prior experience. And this adds to other factors like personality, social environment, and, s and social hierarchy. When you add other factors to this, we should add the meaning dogs attach to the factors of the ambience they live. Domestication may be interpreted as a change of evolutionary change. And therefore, some animals may adapt to men and the captivity environment with genetic changes, amongst others. So, no doubt, this can be complex and changing. Maybe the most important sources of stress in animals, particularly in captivity, are those they cannot control and they cannot escape from. Well, well domestic animals adapted themselves to living in an atropic environment, which I've already described. Men changes it continuously, not only once, they change it over and over. Oftentimes, pursuing economic or aesthetic benefit, and some other wanting to give a better quality of life without considering whether the reason comes from a good intention or bad intention. These changes take to continuous readaptation efforts by animals through different learning methods as a unique means, as a only means to get adapted to unstable environments. While acute stress resulting from this process might be connected with other symptoms like diarrhea, infections, changes in 
growth rate and behavioral changes, when they are chronically manifested, they come together with physical manifestations of their health condition. Oftentimes, stressing, physical stressing agents are easy to recognize. The dog loses weight, there is no will, they don't, they don't feel like moving, they want to be lying all the time. At a glance, you can tell the dog has a problem, but there are some other intrinsic factors which only a very clear mind might help consider what's going on with the dog. And so, we can see those are the physiological indicators for which the dog is having this. It is a big mistake an interpretation at the cortisol level. Cortisol is a hormone which helps tremendously improve tissue and muscle of animals. And it is also known as the, as the stress hormone. This results in vets who are to help for the dog to be better dedicated and be is able to prevent all this stress will help solve that problem. I come from a little town in the middle of the valleys of Argentina, Las Pampas. It was so small and there was no pavement to get to, Nuevos, to Buenos Aires. And there was a large announcement saying welcome and after you saw it the back of the same was have a good trip come back soon it was this small my town so in this town most people like myself were hunters my grandpa was a hunter my father was a hunter I've been a hunter but we are protectionist that's important for us This is the PDF. Here we have it. This is the PowerPoint. Where was I? Oh, yeah. It was this small, as I said before, we were all hunters. And when I was eight, I had my first hunting dog. It was a pointer. It was a, a bitch. Her name was Adriana. I don't think there is one single hunter, hunter with a name, and it was Diane instead of Adriana, it was Diane. I think we all had one. And it was, you learn these things, as I said before, since I was a child. That is why we love hunting those so much. That's why. That's why we love hunting so much. Even though we become a hunter, and there is one thing I want to say. When people against us, hunters, against breeders, I would like to say to those people that the first protectionist is the breeder himself. The top protectionist is the breeder because they are protecting the breed they are working with. So the first is the breather. They are the first to protect the breath. Secondly, the second protectionist and conservationist is a hunter because they don't want the breed to become extinct. There are many events in the world. For example, at some point, Kenya prohibited major hunting. It was one of the countries with the highest population of wild animals. And what happened? Then the populations, fauna populations in Kenya came down, down and down. But why was that? Because what do people with it do? It's the, they would come, people would come hunting. Ah, it's playing now. So let me get back to this. Now it's playing. That little bell you see the beautiful places and the dog is working out there in the mountains so you can't see them when they mark so when the dog marks the bell then the bell 
stops. That means uh, the, do the dog is marking a prey. This is a French trainer. He's very well known and it was done by the, by the French club. And it's really good because it also speaks about breed standards. Lo que les decía, felicitar al perro. Muy, muy bien, bien hecho, buen chico. Muy, muy bien. Es un perro que hace todo el trabajo bien, es un perro polivalente. Entre 40 y 50 metros este perro, porque puede crecer mucho y tiene un desempeño excepcional en tareas difíciles. Y, y, es un perro hiper resistente. Es un perro. Excelente, un perro de casa, excelente. Hunting in that environment, imagine a dog that is not well fed, one without vitality to run back and forth in the forest. Here they are hunting, they are hunting and tandem. There is another video. 
chaque individu à ce stade, et c'est courageux de la sorte, courageux avec le droit et courageux dans le monde. Il y a un peu aussi, on va tout de suite parler de tout de suite, c'est une chose qui très bien, avec un grand nez, et toujours très très passionné de la scène de la fin, et qui était quand même fait avant tout d'abord pour être un chien de ça, et ça peut vous réussir, c'est un chien qui est un mal qui va vraiment soit soit bien fait, mais il est il peut remporter le même soleil, il peut remporter un peu de de c'est un chien de la on a une dans C'est le chien d'un chat, c'est le chien d'un chat. Pour les gens, pour les gens qui ne savent pas cela, ils devaient tout de suite, comme on l'entend, comme on l'entend très souvent, c'est le chien idéal. C'est un peu un handicap pour le chien de ils ne comprennent pas qu'il faut aller chercher le point de handicap toujours à la médité et à la médité de terrain. Donc on a beaucoup de mal à courir par les autres apprentissants. C'est le chien de chien qui peut chasser tout de suite, il est sans problème avec son propre budget, c'est le chien de chien de chat par les autres. There are dogs that that can spend an hour in the water trying to find the prey. This one is now pursuing an injured duck. As you can see, no stress in these dogs. They are happy to be with a with a, with a, with a person. They would go get it. They wouldn't fight for the dog. So if you don't want to hunt, you can at least take the dog to the field. In some of the places, you don't even need a shotgun. They take the dog out of the field so that they enjoy, so that they spend doing what they like doing. What they've been doing for years and years and centuries of this sort of technical condition for which the dog was created. Là, il y a, comme nous le dit, le bras, c'est-à-dire que le chien doit être bien formé, 
il a fait le fondu aussi. On voulait que euh, cette machine en rouge très à vite à la viande, comme on dit, donc effectivement il faut le soutenir un peu, mais il coule, c'est du vrai chat aussi, il coule souvent, souvent, et il y a un peu de Dogs are happy, they're not shot, they've been shot, and they are out doing what they like doing in the field. Did you realize an important thing? This dog will pursue any kulu, any trace, so there are no animals to hunt or to compete. It's the dog, their own standard, and that's the only standard that serves, either for a hunting dog or for competition in a position. And well, what would be my recommendations from here? That was it for the, for the video. Muchas gracias. Well, this is my passion. Thanks. It was thanks to these dogs that I started loving dogs at the age of eight. I've had a dog all my life, and all the titles you would wish to offer me, I have one I like the best, and the one I love being told. Miguel, su creator. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Miguel Angel Martinez from Argentina. Now, let's open the floor for questions. Miguel Angel, voy a hacer la pregunta en inglés, mi disculpa, porque mi español es muy malo. Go ahead. I will take this in English because my Spanish is very poor. From uh, one hunter to another, I will uh, say that thank you so much for this beautiful presentation. And I think this is a super important topic that you highlight because I think society often misunderstand and uh, a really negative light has been put on hunting and hunting with dogs. And I think in most hunts, actually the hunter is depending on the dog because if you shoot a bird and you don't have a dog, you're in trouble. So showing this movie, showing happy super dogs without stress, I think this should be highlighted much more because it's an important topic both for the dogs and for the hunting because the hunter is depending on a dog. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much for your positive feedback. When I taught my training courses and I've attended lots of congresses, and one thing I forgot to mention and which I liked, and it is once in Puerto Rico at the second uh, Latin American and the Caribbean Congress, somebody approached me. And somebody, they, they got this person by the American Kennel Club to have a, a talk about cockers. And when the person started the, the discussion, I thought, mm -hmm. 
there were all these things, but it was exactly the opposite. The person started the conference, the screen went blank, and we heard a shot, like the one we heard, bang, bang. And then you could see an American cocker jumping over a fence, taking a bird, a prey, and bringing it back. And that was the same that the dog did in water and many other places. This breeder, this great breeder from the States, Seth, Mr. Misters, um, judges or candidates to judge, remember that American cockers are hunting dogs. And that's what matters. Thank you. Thank you for this presentation. Beautiful videos. I have a question. Is there a better condition for hunt development? Okay. Are males or females better suited for hunting? Which one is better? Males or females? Both are the same when it comes to hunting. There is only one difference. That females may be in the heat right in the middle of the hunting season. That is the only inconvenience I could see. I never liked to, to treat them in, in hormones. If they had a heat, they had a heat. I would never cause it passing on. But both males and females have the same attitude. In this video, we could see males and females, females like. Females have a condition that it's, it is faster in training, but they're exactly the same when hunting. Muchas gracias, Señor Miguel Ángel Martínez. I want to thank the FCI board members for giving Mexico the opportunity of having this important World Congress for Welfare and Health for the dogs worldwide. We are really pleased and thank you so much for giving us this great opportunity. And also I want to thank all the speakers from all over the world who participate in this great event. Thank you.